Hi there YouTube friends, welcome back to another episode of Auntie A's Kitchen. Simple and delicious food cooked here in South Korea with South Korean ingredients. If you're new to this channel, hi, and yes, CEO, and welcome to all of the new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the recipes as much as I am making them. I want to ask you a question. What is your favorite burger restaurant? Please leave a comment below. I'd be interested to know. For me, hands down, it is in Korea Shake Shack Burger. So I thought today, I can't always go up into Seoul. Why don't I bring Shake Shack to my own apartment? I hope I do it justice. Today, I'm going to be showing you a homemade double Shake Shack smash burger with French fried onions. I'm going to be showing you how to make a potato burger bun. And Shake Shack Burger is very soft bun and it soaks up all of the juices from the hamburger. Very simple recipe how you can make these. It's only one to two hours rest time and so they are simple and absolutely delicious to eat. Then the star of our show is the burger and the sauce. Now I don't know the exact recipe for Shake Shack sauce but I think I'm pretty close and we're going to be doing a smash burger. I love just getting the meat, putting it in the pan, letting the pan, the heat, and the natural juices in the burger do everything for us. We'll season our burger once it's in the pan, and as you put the cheese on, it is just marvelous combination of flavors from the burger and the cheese and the crispiness of the bun that we will have also toasted. The third thing that I'm gonna be showing you today are French fried onions. So, let me show you. A homemade double Shake Shack smash burger with French fried onions. I get my potatoes onto boil ready so that I can use them in the dough later. Next, I separate my egg yolk and I'll use the whites in another recipe. I measure out my yeast, I get it from Home Plus. As usual, all of the ingredients and instructions for today's recipe are in the description below. The potatoes are done, so I drain off the water. Make sure that you keep this water and don't throw it away as we'll be using some of this in our recipe later. I measure out the potato that I need. The rest I'll use another day and then I get on with mashing the potato so that it's ready to use later. Next, I measure out my dry ingredients, some flour, salt, and sugar. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to use some of the boiling water from the potatoes. So I measure some out and then add milk to this. I usually find that this is then the perfect temperature to add yeast to to activate it. Usually we would add the sugar in with the yeast and let it rest. But today we're just gonna put all of the ingredients together. It really is a no fuss, simple recipe. I quickly mix up my dry ingredients and then start to add the other ingredients one by one, making sure to mix well in between. First my mashed potato and then my egg. Once everything is mixed in well, I then add the milk, yeast, and that boiling water that had the additional starch in, which will help our recipe. Using a wooden spoon, I mix together all of the ingredients and then once it starts to come together, I then use my hand and knead the dough. It is a very sticky dough, which is why I then knead it inside of the bowl as I find this a lot easier than putting it on the board. I knead the dough for about five minutes until all of the ingredients are incorporated and I feel that the dough has got a good texture. I then add the butter and continue kneading until the butter is also well mixed in and the dough has a good soft texture. My dough is looking and feeling great, so it's now time to let it rest. I put some oil into another bowl and then place my dough into the bowl and let it rest between one and two hours or until the dough has doubled in size. I cover with cling film and then place in a warm part of the apartment. After about an hour of resting, the dough is looking fantastic, so I empty it out onto a board so that I can divide it into smaller rolls. As you can see, you don't need much flour. I fold each of the sides into the middle and then turn over, stretching out the dough so that I can divide and cut my dough evenly. Interestingly enough, shaping the dough is one of my favorite parts. As you can see, I fold the dough into the middle, then I turn it over and using the sides of my palms, finish shaping my ball. Place some baking paper onto your tray and don't forget to leave a little bit of room in between each of the bread rolls as they will expand a little bit more in the next rise. The last thing to do is to flatten your rolls and then cover them and place them somewhere warm in your apartment for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, they should have a good rise on them. Then the last thing to do is to cover them with a little bit of egg wash and then place them into your preheated oven, 180 C, for about 20 to 30 minutes. 
So here we have simple, with little effort, potato burger rolls. Place them onto your cooling rack until you are ready to use them or into an airtight container once they have fully cooled down if you are using them another day. Next, I'd like to show you a simple burger sauce. I add some mayonnaise, ketchup and mustard into a bowl. The amount of ingredients that you use will depend on the amount of sauce that you're wanting to make. I'm only making a little bit today, so I only put a little bit of each ingredient into my bowl. I don't think Shake Shack adds whole gherkins to their burger sauce, but we're going to today because I think it not only adds flavour but texture to our sauce. I cut up the gherkin and place this into our sauce with a little bit of its juice as this adds a little bit of a kick too. The sauce is looking fantastic so I cover it up and place it in the refrigerator until I'm ready to use it. Next I'm going to show you how I prepare my French fried onions. They really are simple to prepare and I think much nicer than onion rings. I cut up an onion and leave it soaking in some milk for about one hour. If I'm going to do some frying I like to use avocado oil as it is a little healthier than some of the other oils and has a very high smoke point. While my oil is on the stove heating up I prepare my flour. I season my flour with some cayenne pepper, paprika and some salt and pepper. I mix up the ingredients and then place into a bigger bowl as this is easier then to cover the onions. I place the onions into my flour mix and make sure they are coated well with flour. Using my wooden spoon I check that the temperature is ready so I place my onions into my pan. Please be careful when you do this, it is boiling fat and I don't want you to get burnt. I had about an inch worth of oil in my pan so I place all of my onions inside. Make sure to turn them occasionally, you're looking for a golden brown colour. They take anywhere between five and seven minutes. Once I feel that they are cooked, I take them out and place them into my sieve so that all of the excess oil can drain off. If you have never tried French fried onions, I highly recommend. They are so delicious and much better than onion rings. While they're cooling, the last thing to do is sprinkle a little salt over the top. This next stage goes very fast, so you need to have all of your ingredients ready to go. I put some homemade garlic butter into a very hot pan. I place my potato burger roll inside to toast up. There is nothing better than the combination of a crispy and soft burger roll. You could toast your bun in butter, but I like the added flavor of the homemade garlic butter with the fresh parsley, so that's what I use today. As far as I can tell, there's an order in which Shake Shack put their burger together, and we're gonna do the same today. So we place our burger sauce onto the top bun, and then lettuce. After the lettuce, we place two tomato slices, not too thick and not too thin. I weigh out the meat to about two ounce balls and then in my hand, I flatten and place into the pan. Using a spatula, I flatten my burgers. Don't worry about how it looks as the flavor will be incredible. Please be careful if you choose to use your hands to flatten out your burger because the pan is very, very hot. I recommend, like the picture in the top right hand corner, using a spoon handle to push down and that will protect your hands. Once I flatten the burgers, I season with salt and pepper and that is the only seasoning you will need as the burgers will do the rest. A smash burger, I think, is the best way to eat a burger. Smashing provides you with more contact points, so then you get more browning and crust development, which adds to the flavor. Once you have smashed your burger, don't touch it again, just leave it in the pan and allow the pan to do the work for you. So once you finish cooking, you get a juicy burger with a combination of texture and flavor working together. I personally don't like using American cheese, but on a burger, this processed cheese works well and adds flavor. But if you have another cheese, feel free to use it. I add a drop of water and place a lid onto my pan and allow the steam to melt the cheese. As soon as that cheese melts, we're ready to serve our burger. So here we have Auntie A's kitchen version of a double Shake Shack burger served with French fried onions. Burger sauce, lettuce, tomato, two smash burgers with melted cheese served in between a crispy soft potato burger roll served with crispy French fried onions. This is a fun, easy, delicious meal that I know you will enjoy making for friends and family. I hope you enjoyed seeing how easy it is to make a double shake shack smash burger with French fried onions. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, have a great week. God bless. Chopo Canada.